being at a health retreat, my life was pretty much living and breathing wellness on every single level. And now I'm behind a computer, yeah. you know, so I know what it takes to get stuck into that computer and not want to put down that task. Mm. But because I have the um, embodiment of what it means to be well within me as a, I guess it's just so yeah, ingrained, you just have to know when to tap out and you have to have some discipline around it. You forget to eat, you live off coffee, you live off sugar. Um, it easily happens. So I'm there as a coach just to sort of say, this is what will happen unless you're prepared. Welcome back to Fashion Business Mindset. Over the past three years, I've had the privilege of chatting with some of the most inspiring thought leaders and change makers in the fashion industry. From highly successful entrepreneurs and founders to those on their exciting startup journey, my guests have shared their stories, insights and strategies for making an impact while shaping the future of fashion. Thanks to you, our audience is growing rapidly with new listeners joining us every week. To help you gain the most out of our conversations, we're excited to introduce our Impact Edit, which showcases the most powerful insights from our previous longer form episodes. These are the golden nuggets, the ideas, strategies and perspectives that can help you learn something new spark a new idea or solve a challenge that you're facing in real time in your business. And best of all, we've purposefully kept these episodes short, minimum time for maximum impact. So whether you're a seasoned business owner or starting out on your journey, our aim is that you end each impact edit equipped with new information that will help you make a lasting impact in your business with your teams and your community. I hope you enjoy the impact edit. And before I go, if I could please ask you to hit subscribe to our podcast so you'll never miss an episode. So let's dive in. So I think for our listeners, there'll be a lot of people that can relate to this kind of, you know, peeing into a retreat, coming back. It's like this little elastic band and you get caught up in this cycle that's probably not so healthy at, at the end of the day. And we all have these goals to, you know, come back and be consistent, but it may not happen. And I think one of the core things about what you do with, with your online program, it really is holding the client or the, the participant's hand through the whole process. Um, and helping them with motivation and helping them with, with accountability as well at the end of the day. But I think that um, I remember, I'm going to do a shout out to Raina here. So Raina, the owner and creative director of Holiday Trading and Co. And that's how I met you amazing humans um, through working with Raina. I remember her saying to me, because she had been to Guingana a couple of times, and she said to me, I just have to find a way to bring Guingana to my team that was her that was you know the way that she shared it with me she's like how can I bring this amazing essence of this experience to my team can't take them all with me to Guingana but how do I bring this back and I think you know that moment in time where I think it was with you Donna she might might have been with I think it was with you Donna she had that conversation saying um you know how can I how can I take this home and then you shared your program with her But I think for our listeners, just thinking about that, it's bringing, you know, that amazing, you know, nurturing feeling or even bubble of being in a retreat, bring that into our daily lives and having people around us that really do have our backs, that really genuinely want us to improve and not only get on the wellness journey, but to stay on it and for it to become a lifestyle change and and just part of, of what we do. Um, rather than something that we kind of check into a, maybe once or twice a year um, and then unfortunately we check out of again. So just I'm sure you saw, um, you know, so many people come to Gungana, Donna, over the years that just, just wanted to take it home um, or got home and wanted to come back, you know, pretty quickly. Yes. And same, Marcello, I'm sure in, in corporate, it's just like, you know, again, they come to a session, no doubt, with yourself. But it's kind of those moments in between consistency, yeah. That's consistency. yeah, the consistent. I think the one thing that you notice the most is 
people go away holiday you could go skiing you know or, or to the beach yeah you're looking for an environment the type of environment triggers certain senses within ourselves um, of relaxation well-being expansion openness so the really the idea of the program is getting people to understand that your environment is here that's this is your environment so the title itself, mind, body, and soul, that's your environment. Your environment's your mind, your body, and your spirit. So how do you look after that? In our training, we always say that if you pay attention too much on what's far, you forget what's near. So we're always saying, oh, this Christmas, I'm going away for two weeks. And that's when I'm going to really relax. Well, you have a weekend or you have an hour break or you have a sporting event with your kids. You could just do same in an hour as what you would do in, you know, two week holiday. Once you understand the power of environment and how to change your environment. So how to change your state of mind, you'd be amazed how quickly within minutes that you could just change your state both mentally physically and emotionally so really one of the the pro, part of the program is getting people to understand that that you, you don't have to go somewhere you know it's great that, that you do go away on holidays to change your environment you just need to stay just change your state of mind and that and that's why going into businesses like a mat like yeah when people came to the retreat within five days, because they've come into our environment, they become the environment Yeah, brings out that environment within you. So it's like, imagine going to work and there's this wellness culture yeah. that's implemented. You will become it because yeah. it's, it's, it's there. It's a yeah. non-negotiable. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. What, yeah. I just think it's so powerful, like change your state. Like, I just think that 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 is so powerful because if we can do that, it doesn't matter what's going on in the crazy world around us. We can be centred and grounded. So Pat, that's just part of what I absolutely love about your teachings because that's empowering. That's actually empowering, especially in the world that we have to operate in right now. Yeah. So I just wanted to recap your business model just for our listeners so that they can kind of really hear about the pillars of your business. So you have the online workplace wellness program. You also have an embodied women's and men's program. So this doesn't just have to be a workplace initiative. Um, anyone who perhaps has their working solo in their business or maybe doesn't have even have a business, they can get access to the men's and women's embodied, pro embodied programs. Then I know that you do one-on-one -on -one consultations. And as you mentioned, Donna, the retreats, the team building events. Have I missed anything? Yeah, and seminars. Seminars. Yeah, yeah. seminars. So, yeah, yeah, events, retreats, whether it's half day or whether it's just an hour seminar, whether it's a Zoom seminar, team building, um, then there's a 16-week program, um, whether it's the men's or women's or workplace yeah. within the workplace wellness um, 16 week program there's also an app to accompany that and that app is where it's you know everyone collects points if they do their weekly challenges and the person who wins the most points at the end of the 16 weeks wins a prize yeah. and um, it's incredible some of the prizes that people have come up with as organizations so um, there's, there's that and then there's the one-on-one -on -one coaching so Marcello has been doing one-on-one -on -one coaching the entire time he's been in corporate and, um, and I've obviously been doing one-on-one -on -one naturopathic consultations and nutritional consultations. So, you know, now that's available for corporate as well. Yeah. Uh, amazing. So can you share, can you both share some of some insights into the type of businesses that have embraced, we'll talk about the Fit for Life wellness program, what type of businesses have embraced that? And what results have you seen them achieve? Oh, the, the, yeah, it's, it's pretty. We've had like firms yeah. because I've come out of Wingana and I've, you know, basically stepped back into Fit for Life. Marcello's been looking after companies for a very long time. So 
law many firms. different yeah. companies have embraced it so you're looking at law firms recruitment firms uh, accounting firms fashion uh, fashion now engineering real um tech tech it's i want to express some um, i work with a company that looks after google facebook asana tech companies that i guess in the 25 years of for me just studying the psychology and dao's philosophy i actually didn't grow up with technology so i never owned a laptop or an ipad i didn't have a phone until i don't know maybe 10 years ago i had my first <laughs> smartphone i don't know i i got rid of all the uh, apps on this phone as well so i only use it to make a phone call or uh, now i have it on that as a whatsapp so i was very unaware of technology and how much of a burnout there is in technology i was unaware how much people are, are engrossed in in just looking at their phone emails and 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 what not and even when as we were you know going into companies more than 20 years ago my clients would say to me oh i get 140 emails every day i, I couldn't understand what that meant because I, well i didn't even know what an email was it was just a message as far as i was concerned so i really didn't really fully comprehend until I started looking after people mm. in in companies whether they again whether it, regardless of what they what they looked after you know whether it was accounting or law or any or anything else it wasn't really until I immersed myself with tech companies that I realized wow people spend 5 6 hours on mm. personal time on technology that's not even professional time so professional time they may spend 8 9 whatever hours and then they would they would come back to me and say oh machalo I, i on average i spend 4 hours a day as personal time so that's 12 hours in front of a screen and that for us really was the catalyst for donna to put the program together and so mm. well if people are going to look at a screen if people are going to get their information from tech why can't we then reach reach them through technology tech and wellness yeah. um come together very very well yeah and so we ask people you know in the when we first do the questionnaire we you know are trying to establish people's measurable outcomes and we do the same for companies and um what we've come to realize is where the program um brings the most success is managing stress and pressure people will learn how to do that better there's improved mental health anxiety is on the rise concentration lack of concentration has become a big thing people are not showing up where they're fully present they're not even there they're there physically but they're not there mentally so there's a there's a haze there's brain fog so also there's lack of patience there's a lot of reactivity so yeah. um we we tend to get a lot of change when people take on you know the workplace wellness cultural changes with all of these measurable outcomes there's improved management of pressure and stress there's improved mental health there's improved understanding of self and how to be more patient there's less worries and concerns and more collaboration within the yeah. team um less reactivity and more the ability to respond and just a general um better workplace wellness culture is generally you know what we see as measurable outcomes when people take it, on the program it'd be interesting to in 2020 the uk ran a survey and they found that 25% of employees feel bullied or harassed that's just simply the way they communicate amongst each other as a team they found that bullying was almost out of control people would then take extra sick days mental health issues this is before covid they calculated that through mental health issues there was over 11 million work days lost due to stress family environment financial depression uh physical condition uh you know they don't move enough i guess 
again, too much time spent in, in front of uh, technology. And then from that, they wanted to measure, start measuring uh, long-term effects. So what would happen to people if they just kept experiencing this? I mean, we've just seen just through COVID, the great resignation, people just mm -hmm. walking out of work, just can't deal with it anymore. So that was a study done before COVID. We're just starting to get numbers now from CSIRO. Uh, they did a, a survey with 4,000 uh, participants and they found, you know, one of the, so over 66% had uh, issues, emotional well-being issues, uh, diet, not moving enough and, and, and whatnot. So again, we just sort of figured, okay, if you're going to look at this tech, we're going to come through to you and reach you through technology and get you to uh, not look at your screen as much. But, you know, <laughs> I have to say as well, because, you know, being at a health retreat, my life was pretty much living and breathing wellness on every single level. And now I'm behind a computer, yeah. you know, so I know what it takes to get stuck into that computer and not want to put down that task. But because I have the um, embodiment of what it means to be well within me as a, I guess it's just so yeah, ingrained, you just have to know when to tap out and you have to have some discipline around it. You forget to eat, you live off coffee, you live off sugar. Um, it easily happens. So I'm there as a coach just to sort of say, this is what will happen unless you're prepared. Mm. So do your food prep, make sure you've got your correct macronutrients, you've got the right food in front of you, make sure you have a lunch break, even if it's just 20 minutes, like it's amazing how you buy time when you're, when you switch off from work, like when you put down the task and pick up the task and only that one task of I'm just going to enjoy tasting this food and get the love out of this food because I've done so much prep for it, I've gone to the farmer's markets and I'm going to taste and receive the goodness from this food 20 minutes you feel loved you've mm. given yourself so much self-care and then you know when you tap back into that next task that at work you're fully engaged you're not reactive because you haven't eaten your blood sugar le levels are now stable you're hydrated again you're clear you're calm um, so that's important in going and doing some exercise in the afternoon so that way when you finish work You've actually got some personal time where you're unwinding from exercise. By the time you come back from, say, going for an afternoon, afternoon walk or going doing a gym session or some yoga, you literally come back going, okay, I'm going to make myself some a healthy dinner rather than, you know, you've gone from getting home and, and picking up another task at work on your computer. I'm just going to do another email before I make dinner. It bleeds out, and before you know it, you're still on your computer at seven o'clock. You quickly rush dinner, and then you're back on your computer. Whereas if you have that time where you go and do that exercise, you're literally unwinding, unpacking, making some new promises to yourself that your afternoon is going to be better. You're going to be more engaged with your family. You're going to switch off, do some something for you. So you mm. go to bed early, and then you wake up refreshed, and you have a better day. So you need this structure embedded into your lifestyle so you can be really good at work, but you can also be really um, available and present for yourself to show up. Mm -hmm. I'm so sitting here that, nodding. I'm just nodding because I'm like, yep, yep, yep. It's, and I'm just like relating it to my own life. Thank you so much for listening to the Fashion Business Mindset Podcast. We'd love to keep connected. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Fashion Equipped. And if you'd like to find out more about our Start Your Fashion Business program and your mentor collective, head to our website, fashionequipped.com.au. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share this podcast with others. Hit subscribe, leave us a rating and review. Let's do this together. Let's make the fashion business your business. This is a Guide Your Light Network production, creating podcasts with purpose.